Uh, thank you, Pastor T. Uh, thank you for the uh, leaders of this ministry for inviting me. Uh, I'm grateful. I don't take this uh, opportunity uh, slightly. I see it as a great privilege uh, from the Lord uh, to be able to share something with us. Um, uh, my pastor has said everything about me, so I, I don't need to say anything. The only thing missing is that uh, I'm, I'm happily married to to, to beautiful Isi. Uh, we have uh, and we have two two children, Gabriel Gabriel Junior and uh, Adasa. Amen. Amen. So. I'm going to share bri uh, briefly with us on uh, the caption, listening to your body. It's quite uh, straightforward. So we want to just have a quick look at why should we listen to our body. And from there, we'll go into the issues about health. And then we can now talk about when there is and abnormality in health. What do you do and how do you go about it? The, one of the main things that we need to bear in mind today is that people do not pay attention to their body until there's a catastrophe. Generally, people don't pay attention to their body until there's a catastrophe. That's why it's easy to eat chips, eat chips for like one month without thinking about what the implication is. Eat chips for six months. Can you look at me? I'm looking fine. No, it doesn't show in six months. It will show in five years' time when there's accumulation of fat. So that's when the catastrophe happens and you start thinking about how to hit the gym. So it would be good that we have the right perspective about our body, and that's why we are having the, this discussion today. Our body is our physical support system. If you miss anything from this uh, morning, just remember it is your physical support system. There's the advance of the scripture that I would like you to bear in mind this morning in Mark chapter 14, verse 38. It is central to everything I'm going to say this morning. He said, truly, truly, the spirit is willing. You want to move, you want to achieve, you want to, the spirit is ready, the spirit won't conquer. Your mind want to move. Your, 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 your vision is before you. You are ready to charge. But the support system is telling you, I cannot move. I humorously, you know, I'm always, a, uh, I, I always uh, try to uh, make my patients laugh all the time. So even when there's no reason to laugh, I still create a reason why they should laugh. Because sometimes, the, the illnesses are so much that they, they lose joy mm. of living. So I go to a place, I see an old man that I know she, I know he cannot move. I know that he cannot move. He's, he can move. I say, well, I, I'm looking for a jogging mate. <laughs> <laughs> he looks at me and I start laughing. I said, I asked him, why the pause? <laughs> why did you pause before you said something? He said, well, <laughs> he quickly thought about it and imagined it and imagined how good it could be to go for jogging. But then he remembered that his body cannot, cannot come out of, the chair, out of the seat to move. So his mind has imagined what it feels like going for jogging, but his body will not respond to it. So it's really, really important. The spirit truly is ready. The spirit, the vision, the dreams that we have, is ready to move, but the body, the body is weak. The body cannot respond to what the mind is saying. So it's important that we 
consider and listen to our body. Why do we need to listen to our body? Because it is the will of God. God wants us well. God wants our body well. He said, the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. I pray God your whole spirit, soul and body. So it's not only the spirit and the soul, but also the body to be preserved blameless. God wants the body intact. It is the plan of God. It is the will of God. And if uh, that's uh, First uh, Thessalonians chapter five, verse twenty-three. And if you look at um, uh, Third John verse uh, verse two, you know the scripture that we read all the time. He said, "Beloved, I I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health." So the focus here is health. It's not sickness. The focus here is health. God wants health. So we will spend some time to define health. What what is health? That's what God is interested in. God is interested in our health. God really, really wants our body to be a functional part of our lives. Say, but know ye not that your body is the temple. Just imagine this. The body that you have, God is saying it is a temple. Now, I want us to imagine what the temple looks like. Imagine this place. Is a building, is a temple. We have swept it, we have garnished it, we have decorated it, we have made it look nice so that we can come and stay in it. That is the picture God is trying to paint regarding our body. Our body is the temple of God, the temple of the Holy Spirit. So God actually wants this body to be in health. If the body is not in health, God is not happy about it. My daughter just had cold this uh, uh, two, uh, three, four days ago. I, even I walked, my head was just spinning. I said, Lord, can I just take this away from this girl? Because I know the way I look at her, she doesn't want to eat because her nose is blocked. That's the way God feels about it. So if you think about your body as a temple, then you will do something about it. Say with me, my body. My body is a temple. Can we say it again? My body is a temple. So if you see, if you view your body as a temple, then you would listen to it. Because there's a way you carry a temple. There's a way, you know, there are some temples that people don't step on it with their shoes. Because they don't think that you should step, you should get all the garbage outside and come into the temple. So they remove their shoes at the door so that they don't defy the temple. So what would, I'm going to bring us back why I said that. So that we can think about the things that we are bringing into the temple that will defy the temple in question. A few years ago, I was, uh, I was sitting in the closet thing in the consulting room and uh, just first in the morning, first patient. He comes in and sits down. And one of my favorite patients, the lady inside and I said, how can I help today? The first thing that she could say to me, doctor, <laughs> I need a new body. <laughs> <laughs> For 30 seconds, I did not know what to say. You know, is it, is it, how can I help today? Is the doctor, I have a headache or you know, you just say your problem. And suddenly I was disarmed. Say, Doctor, I need a new body. And she meant it. I said, What can I do? She said it the second time. So, Doctor, just, just, I need a replacement. <laughs> <laughs> Why? She's got rheumatoid arthritis, joints, and mornings, um, joints, even in the morning. When she wakes up in the morning, but her own typical case, it takes two hours before she can get moving. So she, she's usually getting crippled by it. So when she said that for the first time, I thought, when she left the clinic, oh, we were talking about all the things we need to do to improve her, her quality of life. But you could see it was important that that physical support system is not moving again, cannot move her. Even coming to that, it took me even coming here now. She had to start preparation very early in the morning to get her uh, her joints moving. Doctor, I need a new body. So that will send the message this morning that this physical support system 
it needs to be looked after. It's a physical, you wake up in the morning, you want to move, but the body is saying, I cannot move. Why? Because I have a defect. Why? Because I am not in health. For this woman, I couldn't answer her question. And we eventually laughed over it. I said, well, I'm so sorry. I cannot meet this need today. That, I mean, this expectation, I cannot meet it. I cannot give you new parts. <laughs> and that's the way I said And we laughed about it. But, but that was the reality, the, the reality she was living in. Her body, her physical support system, the mood that moves her mind, that moves her spirit, is getting crippled. And she needs a change. So bearing this in mind, that's the reason why we need to think about lifestyle and attitude that breathes health. Can we say that together? Lifestyle and attitude that breathes health. It matters. So when you are thinking, your attitude, the, the, way, the way you are thinking about your life should be the one that maintains a steady health. Why? Because our health impacts us emotionally, intellectually, and spiritually impacts everything. Impacts everything. Health often determines the quality as well as the quantity of our lives. They say health is wealth. It's really it's true. Some people have made all the money. There was something there was a there was a there was something they put that someone said that's People spend the first 50 years of their life making money and they spend their last 20 years spending all of it in ill health because they have not rested, they have gotten burnt out, they are, come, they are wiped out, they didn't rest when they were supposed to rest. So by the time they get to 50, they now spend all that money they got to do dialysis, do all sorts of things to, 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 to try and live. For a longer time. It determines the quality and quantity. A pack of cigarettes is the cheapest. Is eight pounds fifty. I don't smoke. I have made some research. There's eight pounds fifty, there's seven pounds fifty. If one smokes, the average the smoke is one pack. A day, which is 20 sticks. <coughs> 8 pounds. 8 pounds times 7 is how much? 56 pounds. 56 pounds times 4 is how much? Who is, who is quick mathematics here? 224. That's how much someone spends in a month. So in one year that you have, how many months do we have in one year? 12. 12, 12 times 224. I know you're working on it. I want us to work on something. 12 times, sorry? 2,688. So that's in the year. 2,688. Now, now, the incidence of COPD has dropped from 40 years to 30 years. But let's take 30 years because that's the average it would take for anybody who has been smoking from 15 years to, to develop COPD. When, it, when the lung is irreversible, it can't go back. It's irreversible, it can't go back. So 2,000 yeah, times 20. 2,000? Yeah, the, 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 the yearly one. We are, we are all, I'm not preaching, we are, we are working this out. It's, 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 can you buy a house with 53,000? Just cash down. You can buy a house, right? So, Somebody is saying, so when you hear that smoking kills, is not the way they see it. When they are smoking and someone is smoking, oh, he kills, then let's wait until that time. So after 20 years, someone has actually spent 53,000 pounds to make themselves sick. So they keep spending that money, keep spending that money. It's small money, eight pounds every day. And most of them, there is the money that was given to them. You know, and they become sick in 20 years time. COPD, and when COPD starts, it continues. It doesn't. It's not something that is reverse, irreversible. It doesn't reverse. It doesn't go back. It continues that way to the point where, who knows the 
the freest of all gifts that we have in this life. Yeah. Air. So a time will come when they cannot breathe. You listening? They can't breathe. He give them free. Can, we have to put oxygen, and be, we, we'll drive the oxygen in because the lungs has lost the capacity to take free air. So, when we say that someone, someone's health can determine their quality of life, is things like this that when you start, I'm not going to. I'm going to go into some other things that we that we bring into the temple that. The first five years, nothing happens. Is in twenty years' time. That's when all the effect of the things that have been put into the body uh, matters. So that I'm thinking about the lifestyle and attitude that will breed health. So you are looking at the outcome in the in the long run. What you are doing now, the way it's going to affect you in time to come. It's easier to maintain good health than to regain it. I need us to go with that. It's, it's easier to maintain a good health than to regain it. If health goes, sometimes he struggle, he struggles, we struggle to, to get it back. According to World Health Organization, health is defined in a broader sense, in a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, not mainly the absence of disease. So that's the point that we're trying to make. The issue is not, let's remove disease, let's remove cold. The issue is being in a place where those things you you your attitude and your behavior is such that you can maintain that wholeness in the process of time and not bring in things that will question or things that will defy that state of wholeness. It's important today for us to know that aging is a process and it comes to everyone. So if you if aging is a process and it comes to everyone, we don't need to add any more thing that will make that process abnormal. For which cause we faint not, though our outward man perish. The word perish there is, and that, word, and that version we say decay. As we are progressing, as we are getting older, as we are getting older, I don't run the way my son runs. I don't have the same energy he has. Sometimes I'm running, I'm, you know, I'm in my mid forties. I I suddenly realized three years ago that when I climbed the stairs, I'm panting. I told my wife, "Listen, this is this, this is enough. Is enough. I can't continue." It. That's when the, you remember what I mentioned. I mentioned that it's when something happens that you begin to think about what your health. Mm -hmm. So as soon as that happens, I say, "Ah, I've not gone. I've not. I still have under forty years to go. Why am I panting?" That was when I hit the gym. I went and bought short, uh, short tea. I can, in fact, he's in my boot all the time. I carry it in my boot. I have, I have Shanti in my boot. I have uh, um, trainers in my boot. So I go on, on the move. Because if I wait until I come back to the house, come and do exercise, wherever I am in the office, I shut the door, start running. <laughs> Don't imagine what happens. I will just start, I just, I just have my free break. I lock the door. Yeah, in my office, I lock the door. Bring out my trainers, put in the TV, and we are running. <laughs> The first time my wife came out and saw me running, he said, what, what are you? I was sweating. <laughs> so we're going to go into that. You need to find out what works. It's really important. So aging is a process, and every one of us will go through that process. The Bible talks about Abraham, who gave up the ghost, but he was in a good old age. He was a good man and full of years, so it is possible. He said, the, the, the days of your years are three score and ten. And if by reason of strength, they be made for this cause. God is interested in this. I, I just wanted to point out that in the process of aging, we lose some function. But in that process, we don't need to add any more to it because of our attitude and behavior. Let's focus on health now. Remember I said, I said, sometimes... It is when something happens, we'll start thinking about health. The MOT. In the UK, we have the Minister of Transport Test Car Inspection. Yes? yes. yes. Every new car, no MOT. Why? Because it's new. Okay. So there is no MOT for the first, how many years? Three years. Three years. Ah, yes, we are going now. MOT, no MOT for three years. And after three years, 
you are required by the law. Say with me, law. Lord. There is a law, there is the demand by the law required of you to do what? Take that car to the emote. Why? To make sure it's functioning. That's the word I want to use. To make sure the car is functioning on the way it should. Fantastic. That's the word. The way is meant to function. And that's the car. So, they want to make sure that the car is in good health. They're not saying anything has spoiled. They want to check whether this car, in the next one year, would it take you from your house to your office? Even though sometimes they finish checking you by the next morning, <laughs> motorway, <laughs> the car decides to behave in its own way. <laughs> so also, now we do have the body emotion, which is overall, the essence of the body emotion is the same thing that we are doing with the car. Remember I said your body is your physical support system. So now we have body MOT, which is overall check to see if, if anyone is at high risk of getting certain health problems. They are there. But we just want to do the MOT to check to see is, is there any risk. If we see that risk, can we amend it or correct it so that it doesn't lead to that health problem? And then, why we do that, we'll now discuss those risks. Those things that will predispose or make the body not function properly. So it's important that we understand that the same way we go every year, after three years of the new car. After three years, they believe that after three years, the car would have gotten some wear and tear that will make it not function the way it's meant to function. So let's go and check it ahead of time and sort it out, right? Mm -hmm. And when they find it, they sort it out. After, after a while, I don't know why I said changing brake parts. You know, I said changing brake parts almost every two years. Every two years. By the time I do the second MOT, after it was changed, they tell me, oh, your brake part is worn. You need to change your brake part. Then every three years, they change the, the brake part and the brake discs. Why? Because if I don't change it, what will happen? You have no brakes. <laughs> I love that. I will have no brakes. I will have no brakes. And the day I will need that brake to save my life, what will happen? The brake is going to fail. That's what happens in real life situation. That heart is beating and beating and beating and beating. And beating and beating and beating. Something is plugging it. The pressure is there. The heart is beating. Trying to force through that pressure. It will force and force and force and force. One day, it goes flabby. Mm -hmm. Another time, you see people having accumulation of blood, lungs, water in the lungs because there's not a flow back. The heart cannot pump through that cholesterol that is blocking that vessel. That's why you see people who start have heart failure. Heart failure actually means the heart has gone flabby. It's not pumping. It's not. And then, because it's not pumping, there's a flow back of blood fluid back into the lungs. Then there will be a combination of fluid in the lungs. It does happen. So it's important that MOT now is what we do all the time to make sure that people's health are preserved. So we we'll just look at risks of health problems. We, can, we need to pick it up to make sure that the whole body is functioning. So we're looking at heart disease, diabetes, kidney disease, stroke. We hear this all the time. So this yearly check, we do it every five years for anybody above 40 to 70, uh, 74. And that person has not had stroke, has not had any major event. Remember, that person has not had any major event. Nothing has happened to the body. That's why we call it well person's check. The person is fine. The car is fine. We just say the car has driven for three years. Let's go check it, right? The person has stayed for 40 years. By 40 years, we are anticipating that some things would have been going where and there. Let's check it. If there's any risk, we can correct it. For those over 65 years, we start talking about signs of dementia. I can imagine that this MOT just takes like 
20 to 30 minutes or talk about simple questions of lifestyle. I don't believe anybody here smokes, but if you smoke, it's important that you reflect on some of the things that I've said now. It's a, better, it's a better way to think about it because smoking is the major risk factor. Major. It is actually major risk factor. When I see someone who is 50 years and is smoking, he has doubled the risk factor of living heart attack. If I remove that risk factor, if I remove that risk factor, the, the risk drop by two. I mean, by a multiple of two. By a multiple of two. So it's the time to talk about lifestyle, family history, you know, measure weight, work out the BMI. You know, some people, personally, I never even thought about my BMI until, seriously, until four years ago, four or five years ago, I thought about my BMI. I said, wow, how could I have gone above 28? I started doing something about it. You know, sometimes it's until you go for all these checks that you actually begin to think differently. You may think everything is working fine. I'm eating burger, everything is fine. No, everything is not fine. It might be fine today, it might not be fine tomorrow. So we need to go have that checkup. Blood pressure, important. One of the things I experienced, there was one gentleman, a reverend gentleman that became my friend. I introduced that to my wife. She just came to, he just came to see me. His blood pressure was on the roof. But he's a reverend gentleman. He's serving God. He prays every day. His blood pressure on the roof. It was that bad I wanted to start him on blood pressure tablet. He said, he, he said, Doctor, can you give me six months? Give me six months. If this blood pressure does not correct, I will take the medication from you. So went on the deal. I didn't tell him what to do. He said, don't, don't, don't tell me what to do. I will go. I know what to do. He went. Exercise. Diet. He came back after six months. His blood pressure was normal. Come back completely normal. Going back to that same thing I said, is until something happens, that's when people decide, I need to do something. Sometimes, you still have, the person still has time. Has time. Other times, it might probably be too late to recover. During that MOT, we we'll do some blood tests. General blood tests, remember I said we are looking for diabetes, we are looking for those major things, diabetes, heart problems, kidney disease, stroke, these things, they happen. They happen all the time, every day. Every day I'm diagnosing someone with, with one of these problems. That's a very really good opportunity to pick, to pick the cholesterol. Remember I said about eating chips and fats. It doesn't, nothing happens until after a while you see it in future. There are some people, also I want to say that there are some people who have not eaten anything, but because of uh, genetic uh, mutation, family history, they have uh, high cholesterol. And then some, sometimes we do a uh, prostate test and we check for thyroid uh, if anyone has symptoms. I want to say something about the, about the thyroid. It's, it's a very, very subtle, uh, subtle problem. You, do, you don't see it, in fact, you never see it in the UK now. We don't see thyroid problems anytime anymore. You will just see it from tests because usually they are asymptomatic. You don't have any symptom. And the closest symptom for thyroid problems is tiredness. When somebody starts complaining about tiredness, 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 for a long time, you check the thyroid and the thyroid is down. For ladies, obviously, we encourage uh, breast examination all the time so that when something starts coming up, uh, I mean, three times every week, every week, most times every day. Now, according to research, for every 27 people that come for a health check MOT, will diagnose blood pressure. That's one person out of 24 will have, 27 will have blood pressure. For every 110 people, one will have type 2 diabetes. And sometimes, you know, type 2 diabetes now, people are asymptomatic. When they're asymptomatic, they don't show any sign. We don't talk about uh, the symptoms now. They don't show any sign. If you just do a blood test, you realize that they are, their HBA once you or their test has gone above normal. You have to do something about it. Because if you don't do something about it, most of the people that have had sugar in their system for a long time, their small vessels are damaged. That's why you see somebody who is diagnosed with diabetes by the following year, the person is blind. Because the tiny blood vessels have been exposed to so much loads of sugar. But the essence of this MOT 
is such that there's so much, about over seventy percent of people will be pre-diabetic when you do the um, when you be pre-diabetic. The value will just be under forty-eight. So you can see that's a warning sign. Most of the people who are who, who are pre-diabetic, if you don't do anything about it, in, in usually in two years' time they will move over. So if they pick it up, next thing, gym. They get to the gym. They, 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 they get to the gym, start their diet, and then reverse that situation. So in pre diabetes is reversible. Even in some diabetic, it is reversible. If you go back, diet, fat, lose 5 kg of weight, then diabetes just goes. But the issue is that, how do I lose 5 kg? It's difficult to lose 5 kg. I've tried it. I am telling you, to lose 5 kg is, is difficult. The kidney disease is the one that is increasing now, which we need to do something about. So we have the cardiovascular risk, as I said. The, the, only, the only one I want to mention here is smoking. There are still people in the church there we are still talking about, is it, you know, should I smoke? Should I, I should have, no, no, there's no. The health implication of smoking is something you cannot bargain with. The cardiovascular risk is very, very high. The cardiovascular risk is a risk someone has. The risk in 10 years' time, <coughs> work it out in 10 years, what is the risk of this person developing heart attack or stroke? We'll work it out. We'll work it out as a percentage. I will give it to them. And if smoking goes away, it drops by half. If we treat the cholesterol, we remove it. Blood pressure, but age, we can't do anything about it. Remember what I said, the age is a process. We can't do anything about age. The, the age is going. We are getting older, so we can't do anything about it. But if we remove all these other risks, then everything is fine. So it's, it's really important that we focus on that. Often we talk about diet, but yet, but yet it's still a problem that we are not looking at what we are putting into the fiscal support system. Remember we talked about the tempo. When people come into the temple, they remove their shoes. <laughs> Keep it outside. So that why? They don't want to defy the temple. That is what diet is like. Some of the things that we are eating today are going to have an implication tomorrow. I'm not going to go into diet. There are diet stuff all over the place. But just have it in mind that for everything you put in this system, is either going to be a positive or negative effect on it? We talk about whole grain, talk about reduce sugar, refine sugar. I don't know what has happened. I, I, I didn't take sugar for, for three years, honey, three years, and then suddenly now I'm just adding a little bit. <laughs> suddenly, I lost, I said, I was, I just ran up the stairs. I went breathless. I said, not a chance. At this young age, I, it was a radical, a radical reversal. What was, I thought I was joking. I stopped eating sugar. I, sugar, I run away. Three years have passed. Suddenly, I'm, okay, honey, can you just put. <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> Fruits, very important. We talk about this all the time. What we put in the body is important. How many people exercised? this past one week if you know you had one exercise yes fantastic 30 minutes 30 minutes how many yes three minutes ten minutes imagine ten minutes every week in a month how, how many how many weeks do you have in a month 14 minutes in one year imagine that you know sometimes we, we don't think it matters seriously it matters i am telling you it matters if you have 20 minutes exercise every day, just 20 minutes cardiovascular, it will help the heart to pump. We talk about it, but it's not easy. I'm trying to give you advice over these last 20 years of medical practice. You have to lose weight. I tried it three years ago. It's not easy. It's not easy to lose weight. From 100 and what was it now? 105. I could. I said I'm going to get to 80 after two weeks. It's difficult. Now that is health. 
Now think about when there is an abnormality of health. Let's go to symptomatology. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 26, I need you to hear this. It's really important. The next slide. And whether one body suffer, all the members will suffer. Remember the last time you had toothache. Who has had toothache here? I've had toothache. You have had toothache. And you woke up in the morning and moved. <laughs> the whole system is shut down. Is that, I said, as minute as toothache is, the whole system is carried along with it. Is any sick, sick, an abnormality of health? I used, to, I used to imagine this story about this little boy that came by miracle. Oh, Jesus. The Shunammai woman. This woman had been waiting all her life. She didn't ask for a child. Man of God came and said, okay, don't worry. by this time next year. He said, no, I'm, I'm satisfied with my life. Can I speak to your commander? He said, no, don't speak to I'm happy with my life. My husband is old. Just leave us alone. We are happy with where we are. But Elijah knows that this is what can change. Is there anything in your life today that you, you have come to believe that it cannot change? I'm telling you now, it can change. Amen. The woman said, leave me alone. There's no need applying faith to this thing. Maybe there's something in your life today that you don't think is, there's any need to apply your faith to it. Try apply your faith to it, you see. It will change. So Elijah, Elijah tells him, okay, by this time next year, you're going to have a baby. Okay, we'll have a baby. And one day, the boy, talking about symptoms, the boy just told the father, my head, my head. That was what he said. My head, my head. I've been thinking about the diagnosis of this boy. My head, my head. Listen, by the time the servant carried the boy to the mother, the boy was there. Symptomatology. We can talk about all the things that can happen to the, to, to the human body from the hair to the toe. As medical doctors, there is always there is always a pathophysiology, meaning there's a way that thing has happened, and this one leads to it. We have done the research, when there's a headache, could it be migraine, could it be tension headache, could it be this? If there's a neck lump, could it be this, could it be this? We worked it out. So we're able to have a little bit of explanation of what is happening in the heart. We know how the heart pumps. So if there's anything happening there, how can we do it? Then there's a test we need to do to actually, in, to actually inform us more on what exactly is happening. So when the body gives you a, when the body does something that is out of the ordinary, like this boy, my head, my head, my head. <coughs> he said, is any sick? Is any sick? That means everything was going okay and then something has happened. And it becomes an abnormality of the normal working condition of the car. He said I was driving. <laughs> it was funny. I had gotten ready for work. As I just drove up my house, I had my heart jumped. I went the next I'm this kind of person, I don't like to hear anything in the car because I have got no clue about car things. I just go to the to the to the dealership, drop the car with them they do whatever they do, close that bonnet. I don't open that bonnet until the next time <laughs> it's time to go back to MOT and servicing. By the time I entered the motorway, it did boom, boom. I just turned. I came back. I called my wife. I said, honey, just bring, just bring that key. I'm not touching this car. I went back. So I called uh, one of the service. My mom, my laws um, uh, Motor guy. I called him. He said, What? Okay, I should describe the sound. He said, No problem. I should just drive the car. I said, Are you kidding me? I'm not driving that car. You have to see it first. <laughs> He's, he tried to reassure me that that motor system is functioning. I said, No, I need you to see it for yourself. I carried the car to him as sure as it was. 
you know what? I drove that car for the next, how many weeks now? For the next uh, three weeks, nothing has happened. Because I was thinking that the, that the wheels were going to go off. And we'll do it. <laughs> so there, there was a symptom that needed me to take that car to the person that knows everything about the car. I wasn't sure about that car. I needed to take that car to the person that would look at it and reassure me that these wheels would not go off. So he called me and said, I said, okay, what would, I said, what would be the worst case scenario? He said, the worst case scenario would be the noise would increase. And that would happen. The noise started increase. I said, my wife, this thing is getting worse. There's one of the wheels, uh, whatever it is. He said he, he, he said, he told me it has not spoiled. It's just worn out. I said, just, just wear and tear. He's making this whole noise. Say, yeah, that place is delicate. It's just wear and tear. You just go and change it. Everything is working fine. So when the body gives you a signal, what do you do? Do you just keep driving? You just keep moving? You know, that's what we'll do. We'll just, the body has given you a tiny signal. You don't stop. You don't stop and check. You keep moving. You keep moving. And the more you move, the more the body is overworking itself. So what do you do with a symptomatology? You remember what, what we got? I said, when one member suffers, one member is suffering, then the toe, paronychia, you know what they call Whitlow? Yes. Who knows what they call Whitlow? Yes. You can write with Whitlow. Yes. When the proper Whitlow, when Whitlow comes, it's like, it's like the, you, the head is spinning. What has the head to do with one tiny stuff? The whole body, exactly. Pain. Yes. Thank you for saying that. You know, pain has its center. Pain, is, because it's happening there, the pain is coming from the brain. Because it's the brain that is interpreting what you are feeling. So that's why the whole system gets shut down. Because of the pain. But the physiology. Or the way the body functions. Let me stop. Some of you know this jargon because it's not, it's not going to help matter today. So, what do you do? What do you do when the body tells you something is going on? Number one, you need to see a doctor. As I said, there is a pathophysiology. There is a reason why that head is knocking in that place where it's knocking. There is a reason why that that place is numb. You know, sometimes you woke up in the morning, the place is numb. The place is actually numb. It's because there's a nerve going there. The nerve has been interrupted. A patient walked into my clinic <coughs> a few weeks ago. She came and she was, she was limping. She was limping. That's what you thought. Sciatica. Fantastic. Sciatica. But it wasn't sciatica. <laughs> so when she described it, she said it happened last week after a few hours. He left. I said yes. I said what happened? He said this evening she came back for work and she, she's crippled. Sciatica will not, mm, might not present that way. So after assessment she had what they call uh, trochanteric trocan trocan bursitis. Hmm. Now, it just uh, is a big word. There's a, a um, there's a, a shock absorber here when it gets inflamed that helps us to maneuver that. If it gets inflamed, it can be so painful. So the point I'm making is that her work, everything, she's a carer, she can't stand, she can't do everything, she cannot do everything just because of that simple process. Pato physiology. Having said that, Internet, Google, and the doctor. You know, all you need to do now is go to, go to the Google and put in um, chest pain, shortness of breath, and fever. <gasps> Heart attack. <laughs> they just give you one diagnosis and then you come back to us, crippled, because of what you have seen on the internet. The only difference, yes, internet will give you some, some resources. The only difference between the internet and the doctor because the internet won't be able to put in everything together to give you what you need. Internet will not talk about life history, doesn't have anything about family history, doesn't put everything together. You remember, you, you just thought about, uh, uh, you just thought about uh, sciatica because you heard the patient was leaping. But the other things about 
when did it start, how did it start, how has it, has it worsened or has it stayed the same? So by the time you now put in all those together, you'll be able to say, it is this, it is that. There are minor illnesses, there are major illnesses. It's really important. I used to read, uh, I used to think about it in this manner when Jesus was, was on earth. That we said in, in his country, he could, dare, he could dare do no mighty, mighty works. So there, there are works that are mighty. He said, except that he just laid his hands on a, on a sick foot. As soon as I, I read that, he just laid his hands on a sick foot and healed them. I just think about cough and cold. Just minor illness, cough and cold, kata. Just touch them, fever goes. It's not like leprosy. It's what we say. You just touch him and this person, that's the that's a mighty work. Leprosy takes like years to disappear. But to disappear in a twinkling of an eye is a mighty work. So you have minor illnesses and major illnesses. So and so also, if there is a pathophysiology, there is also a treatment. There's a treatment, there's a there's a there's the way we we'll look at it, we we'll say, okay, fine, this one paracetamol will work. This other one, paracetamol, will not work. It's important that we understand that medical uh, practice have advanced. There are so many things that are happening now that you know, sometimes most of the things that were not possible in the yesteryears are possible now. So there is a possible treatment. You know, the, the man, the Samaritan, that, 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 uh, uh, that mended that man that was beaten, there was a treatment. He looked at the wound, he said, fine, I'm going to put oil I'm going to put wine and it's going to heal. So there's a medication for that. He said, a merry heart doeth good as medicine. 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 A merry heart doeth good as medicine. So it's important that when the body shows you a signal, when the body shows, gives you a tiny bit, just like I, I gave you a description of the car, I just bumped and bumped and bumped. And I'm, I'm thinking, this wheel is going to this wheel is going to, is, is going to come off. But, but because I am a novice, yes, that's the word. Yeah, because I know nothing about cars. Wisdom, say with me, wisdom. Wisdom. Wisdom demands that I. Wisdom demands that I quickly. That I quickly do something about it and go to someone who can at least explain it. He even explained it and told me I can go with the car and drive it for however long I want to drive it. The worst that will happen, it will get worse, it, the noise will get worse, but my wheels will not come off. You know, I was worried that my, that my wheels going to come off in the motorway. That's why I went back and dropped it. So, the same happens when there is a knock on our health. Speak to a health professional. Now it has really become easier. All you need is to die what? One, one, one. Just die one, one, one. One, one, one. And then now it's even easier. One, one, one will not, they will give you advice. They will just give you a few advice. And next thing you are in front of the doctor. So they will just push you and make sure you see a doctor to give you advice. Symptomatology. What to do. I want us to remember that the church is still here. Say with me, the church, the church. is still here. Still here. Say, we are still here. We are still here. Why did I put this note for you? It's because suddenly we have forgotten that there is power in the church. Say with me, power. 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 There is still power resident here. Oh, it says, has anyone lost the normality of health. Is anyone sick among you? The Bible gives a very, very clear, I'm very serious about this now. The Bible gives a very, very clear instruction on what to do. You have gone to the doctor, you have gotten an explanation, they are giving you everything you need to know about what is happening to your system because you want to know. I say the next thing you need to know is go and collect power. Say with me, power. Power. Because there is power. The church, there is really power in the church. He said, he said, he's sick among you. Let him come to Pastor T. 
come to the elder of the church, they will do one thing. You see, they want anointing in the name of the Lord. And whatever abnormality, the Bible is saying that there's abnormality. The Bible yeah. understands, he's saying that there is something has gone wrong and it needs to be corrected. And their power is in the church to correct it. He said, you shall lay hand on the sick. So, there was health, but sickness has come. You shall lay hand on the sick, and they shall do what? So that means there is a recovery. The same way I told you there is a treatment. Fat. the further I went to the ministry, I realized that we are all fighting the same thing. We are all fighting the same thing. Are you listening to me? The same fight I am fighting, that is the same way the church is fighting against sickness. We are doing research and fighting against it. The church, God has given us the armor to fight against it, to make sure we banish it. So you lay hand on the sick, and what will happen? They will recover from that, from that abnormality. If you see in that place, he did not say the kind of sickness it is. He said it will recover. Say with me, it will recover. It will recover. It will recover. You know that sometimes you have come and Dr. Gabriel have said this thing. Oh, Jesus. There was one woman that came. They are giving him, giving her verdict. She came to let me see. How long have I got? I was so angry. I said, why is this woman asking me, 46 years old, you're asking me, how long have you got to live? But the church, say the church. The church. There is power in the church for recovery. 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 Power in the church for recovery. There is power in the church for recovery. Let me just read this part and then I will spend the next five minutes. There's anyone that needs a recovery. I need, I need you to know that there is a recovery here. Here in the church. That's the way God made it. God made it that after we have looked for everything, when we come to the church, there is what? A recovery. There is a way back. Science sometimes has COVID. Remember that I said there is a possible treatment. There, but there are some there is no possible treatment. We know they have come. We have looked everything. We can't find out why it's happening. But in the church, they are all categorized as what sickness. There is no there is no pathophysiology. There is only one pathophysiology. You know, in the church there is only one pathophysiology, which is the next line. Put it for me. You say how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, who went about doing good and healing all. That we're oppressed of who? That is where that, that is our own pathophysiology. Our own pathophysiology is we know where it's coming from. We will finish it off. We that is our own pathophysiology. There is no explanation. That is why oh Jesus, how is it? That's why Jesus was someone who has epilepsy. He doesn't see he doesn't see epilepsy the way I'm seeing epilepsy. I'm seeing epilepsy. Oh, there is one neuron, one neuron that is abnormal in the brain and it's a trigger. It's gone off. When Jesus sees epilepsy, what does he see? He said there's a foul spirit. There's a foul. That is Jesus' diagnosis. He said that's why when you come into the church, you need to now allow allow the higher authority to rule. Because Jesus says it's a foul spirit. It is a foul spirit. Hallelujah. If you cast it out, the leprosy decision would be because that is seizure. I'm interpreting it as I, no. There's a neuron. There's, a, there's actually a neuron moving the brain. I'm not arguing that. If you look at the anatomy of the brain, it has, that's why stroke, when stroke affects this side, the speech goes. Because there's something here, there that controls the speech. If there's something like that, there's a part of it, there's a way that works. But Jesus says it's a foul spirit. Don't, don't argue with him. It's a foul spirit. Cast it out, see your goes. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We're going to pray now. Now look at this. He said, when Jesus entered into that place, no, the, the, you, you missed the slide. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He said he went through Galilee, teaching in the synagogue and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. You see, he just categorizes it among the people. <laughs> news about him spread all over Syria and people brought unto him all who were ill with various diseases. Now look at this. Those suffering from severe pain. I saw a lady yesterday pain, 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 pain. He came in pain, pain, pain. 
he has zomorph, he has oromorph, he has he has gabapentin, he has pain. He just he's throwing everything on the pain. The pain is not moving. He just need power in the church. Demon possessed. Those having seizure, you see seizure, and paralyzed. What happened? There was a recovery for them. There's one more recovery I need to mention now while we pray. I want someone to receive that recovery this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Next slide. Stop here. We'll stop here. See, Jesus heals the brokenhearted. No doctor can do this. We don't have this pathophysiology of how to mend brokenheartedness. They have such and such. How do this woman that the husband that how do I mend this heart? Nobody can. You can talk and talk and cancel. You can after cancel, they go back to the house. And he binds their wounds. Who can do this? Part of physiology. I am talking about part of physiology. Only Jesus can. Can we just close our eyes in one moment? Anoint the power of God. The power of God. The power of God. Symptomatology. <coughs> What do we do? You go to the doctor, get the explanation, make sure that you are watching your health, make sure that you are listening to the signals your body is giving you. But remember, there is a recovery in the church. Is there anyone here this morning that needs a recovery? I want you to hold your hands in that place because there is a mending. There is a mending in our midst this morning. It's called the touch of fire. You can't come here and not be fired up. You cannot come into this meeting and not be ignited. I need you to reach out. Reach out to that brokenness and reach out to the master this morning. He said he binded the bro he can bind that brokenness by the anointing that is in our midst this morning. There is a healing happening. He said he will bind it Bible said so, and I believe there is a binding process going on on the inside of you right now. That brokenness is being healed right now. You have cried and you have wailed. You have you have cried out your heart. How can my life form again? I am telling you right now by this anointing that.